Yo, what is up my friends? Welcome back to another draft here on Magic Online. Some more Vintage Cube. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all of your Magic card related needs. We've got some Vintage Cube. We opened a piece of power. We actually opened two mocks in this pack, but... Well, one of them is just really good and the other is broken, so... I think I'm gonna lean towards taking the broken card here. Pick one pack, one mox emerald, not too shabby. Probably going to lean in towards some green rampy style deck, but obviously mox go into every deck, regardless of if you're gonna play that color or not. Other notable cards here, we've got the Animate Dead for Reanimate, Mystic Confluence, great counter, plus card draw, plus whatever you want it to be. The aforementioned Mox Diamond and that Spell Seeker. But we take that Emerald and we move on with our lives. And now, what do we second pick? Probably another artifact. Gruel Signet, Demir Signet, Thran Dynamo, Course of Portal. All pretty solid follow-ups. I love having Signets in my deck, especially if you have access to a Mox. Just being able to go like turn one land Mox and a Signet and you feel so far ahead. That, um, just kind of, you know... Hard to beat sometimes, almost like a uh, commander-esque type opening draw, right? Turn one, soul ring, signet, your go. What do we want to take here? I think I lean towards taking the Demir signet, even though Gruel signet obviously overlaps with the Mox that I've taken. I think we'd prefer to stay open. We don't see any much green in this pack anyways. Yeah, let's take the blue-black mana rock. Go from there. Okay, we could follow up with an Ashiok after taking Demir Signet. Grizzlebrand is always fantastic, and if we wield the Animate Dead would be a good start to the Reanimator plan. Arbor Elf could go along with the Mox Emerald if we really wanted to. Mm, I don't know. What do I feel like here? I think Vintage Cube is a lot about what you feel like at the moment, what your preferences are, you know? I mean, obviously, it's nice to stay open with things, but at the end of the day, draft what you want. You can have a good time that way. Maybe I'm feeling like a grizzle brand this time. Let's do that. Not losing much. We might even end up wheeling like the Arbor Elf anyways. And if we wheel the Animate Dead, then we're for sure in a good spot. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take Liliana here now. One of the best... Um, Reanimator cards, in my opinion, anyways, because usually you're the one that's able to utilize the plus one really well, right? You don't mind discarding a fatty or whatever, and then the minus two is also super relevant. We're losing out on Bloodstained Mire here, Bayou. Let's take Lily. Let's see if this is the thing to do. Okay, so despite having a good Reanimator start, I'm not going to take Packrat. I just don't care for Packrat. I'm actually going to go with another Signet here. Another thing that we could stay open to is like the idea of a sneak attack style deck. And both of these mana rocks are great for if we can find sneak attack. Plus, again, I do have the Mox, so. Seems like a fine choice. Oh, should we try Emrakul? Let's do it. Normally here, you're supposed to snap up the Watery Grave because in Reanimator, you generally end up in blue-black. And a land like Grave is perfect. But... You can still reanimate um, the Eldrazi. Now, you need to do it the instant speed ways, so I think it's just Shallow Grave and Corpse Dance in this format. But if it comes together, it is super fun. Wow, getting an Archon of Cruelty here now, too. Okay, so I'm going to lean towards Sneak Attack slash Shallow Grave Corpse Dance, and this is a really good start for that. Uh, Duretti is solid. This Duretti is actually really, really good too, because this one rummages, so it's good for getting cards in your graveyard. Obviously, Factor Fiction, fantastic value card as well. There's another Liliana here. I'm not sure we want that one, though. It's, like, fine. Rafine's Tower for blue-black could also be okay. I think I'm going to lean towards that direction. Venser, also pretty good. Oh, baby. Look at that. We wield the Animate Dead, and that tells me that we are in the right seat. Or rather, that I made a choice that ended up working out. Maybe not the right seat, but got lucky, and uh, yeah, we we are going to have a good time with the Reanimate Deck. Oh, did I not even... Okay, 
I am not going to lie, I did not realize there was a shallow grave in this pack initially, but the fact that we are getting it on the wheel after taking Emrakul just makes everything so clutch. That's nuts. Him to Turok would be very good here as well. Same thing with Kolagons. We have everything we need. We're taking the Bone Shards. It's another cheap way to discard a card. This deck is already looking insane. Uh, cards we're really looking for now are just like Tutor Effects or Hand Disruption. Because we basically have all of the core components we already need. We have the three fatties we could ever want. We don't need any more. We have two of the better reanimate effects. We have multiple discard effects. So, I mean, Splinter Twin is another potential card we could play, honestly. Yeah, this deck is, this deck is nuts. This is an insane start. It's sad that Mox Emerald doesn't overlap with any of the colors we're likely to play. But other than that... No complaints. Oh, oh. Ay, 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 ay. How about opening a Mox Emerald and then opening a Black Lotus? Just casually. Just no big deal. We are passing a couple of good cards, but I expect them to wheel, right? Faithless looting for this style of deck is nuts, and so is Through the Breach. Wow. To say that we are getting very lucky, lucky would be an understatement. A vast understatement. How do we look on this pick two of the second pack, though? Might just take Dark Slick Shores. Toxic Deluge is another really solid one. I guess this is a better way to stabilize. Yeah. I mean, it's a three-mana Wrath. You have to pay life, but whatever. I think the Shores is a secondary choice here. And then not, nothing else in the pack interests us. Okay, this is a probable Mystical Tutor over Putrid, uh, Putrid Imp, which wheels. Xander's Lounge, also very, very potential value there. But the nice thing about Mystical Tutor is that since we already have Shallow Grave, it's a nice hit for it. Plus, we'll probably find other good things to do with it. Bobble, Lounge, Click, Imp. Yeah, that's a good pack, too. Balance is really nice, but I don't think we want to take it, right? I mean, I have actually a couple pieces of white fixing already, but... Ah, the thing is, I don't like Makeshift Mannequin. It is another instant speed way to reanimate things like Emrakul, but man, it's it's one of the weaker ways to reanimate. Like, I almost wonder if uh, Savai Triome here for the red and black is better. Right, because we're planning on wheeling the under, not underworld breach, uh, through the breach, and if we pick up sneak attack, that's just a better pickup. I feel like. Let's do that. Plus the fact that uh, what's it called? Animate dead wheel at a pack one. We can probably end up wheeling the mannequin. Spell pierce for some more cheap interaction. Solid. Good. Recurring nightmare. I oh my gosh, there's a sneak attack. I was gonna say. Recurring Nightmare is not super good in these style of decks. Normally you want to play like the green ETB value deck for that, but now <laughs> now we have the sneak attack, so this is this is disgusting. We even have the perfect signets for this too. Windswept Heath does grab what? It grabs Savai Triome. It does grab Rafine's Tower too. That's actually kind of nice. Cabal Ritual is good. Talisman is surprisingly good in, the, in a deck like this as well. Like, we are effectively a combo deck, so... Um, giving the opponent the Talisman af after, uh, after you activate it the first time is not a huge deal. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like taking the Talisman here, because we're not going to wheel anything out of this pack. Let's do that. Nurturing Peatland is a no. Brazen is good. Dismember is also solid. We surprisingly have a decent amount of creature removal already, though. Toxic, Downfall, Lily, and the uh, Bone Shard. So I'm not sure if Dismember is as necessary. Kind of like Brazen for a little bit of interaction. There's the Through the Breach, as expected. And yeah, at this point, we just need fixing, and our deck is perfect. Boros Signet, I'm not sold on. But our only other choice here would be Dig Through Time. Which I guess is going to be pretty good if we're comboing. I just need more ways to get cards in the yard, so. 
We'll see about that for now. But yeah, this deck is spicy. Uh, we need a little bit more card selection, I guess. That's what we're missing. Fixing and card selection. So picking up like random ponders or preordains or night whisper in pack three will probably be the biggest boon for us. There's the Putrid Imp. We'll play that as well. It's a one mana creature that discards for free. So good with the grave, the animate dead. You can even just discard random cards for dig through time purposes. So Mystical Tutor now can grab through the breach as well as everything else it had earlier. Through the breach and Shallow Grave, probably the most common hits with that. We have a couple of free white sources. I mean, there's the mannequin on the wheel. We might end up playing that. Steel Seraph sideboard could be okay for a more aggressive deck. But I guess we have Grizzlebrand and Archon already, so probably unnecessary on those two. I am two for two on opening power in first pick. So Mox Emerald, Black Lotus, yeah, how about Ancestral Recall or Time Walk? That's probably not asking too much, right? If we're already two for two, then why not go three for three and get the nuts? Okay, and last pick, Cabal Ritual, which we could run. Um, black, um... Triple black is pretty solid, and if we if this was like dark ritual, we would certainly take it. <laughs> uh, okay, so casually just gonna open Mox Emerald, Black Lotus, and Mox Jet. Why not? Why not just get everything perfectly? What are we losing out on here? Knight's Whisper, Black Cleave Cliffs, Time Spiral could be okay since we have the sneak attack breach for the insta kills effectively. Ashen Rider is another sneak or reanimate target. Oh boy, would you look at that, Mox Mox Lotus, Frantic Search now, fantastic pickup and probably going to wheel the Una's Prowler, this digs, it discards, it's free, what's not to love? Yeah, I think the mana is going to be the only thing we need to pick up right now, like is it Signet here looks fantastic. Uh, hmm. Inquisition's also really good. Oh, is this? We're three for three on perfect signets too, aren't we? The Rakdos, the Demir, and the Izzet now. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good fixing. I mean, it's, again, especially since we have double mocks. What this? This is insane. If we just get like three lands out of this pack, this might be one of the best decks I've ever drafted in terms of what it's trying to do, plus card quality. Yeah, it just needs like a Ponder, a Preordain, and then like a couple of duels. I think we can probably cut the downfall here. And let's see, we're at like 21 playable cards. We're only going to need to run like 16 total lands. There's Reanimate proper, okay. And that gives us a, another Mystical Tutor hit. Because otherwise, Mystical Tutor could only really hit um, Shallow Grave. We can cut, like, the Makeshift Mannequin now. Snapcaster would be another good one in this deck, too. Jeez. There it is. There it is. There's the Entomb. Oh, no. I have to take the Entomb. I completely forgot about this card. I'm not sure how. Our deck is insane. Man, Passing Relic and Tar Pit are so gross, but... I'm not going to take the chance. The Entomb is just way too good. Alright, so Reanimate, Animate Dead, and Shallow Grave are three Reanimate effects. Then we have the Sneak Attack Breach. Wheel of Fortune, Grief. Those are all really good too. I think I like the Wheel of Fortune here. 
pretty late Library of Alexandria as well, but I don't think we're going to use that all that much in our deck, are we? Mana Morphos. There's Corpse Dance. Do we need that? That's another way for Emrakul, but I don't think that's necessary. Simic Signet is like okay, but not great. I guess we'll take the uh, the Corpse Dance. Maybe we cut the Brazen Borrower instead and just keep... Like we have a perfectly good game plan here. Wow, look at that Blood Crypt. There goes Zealous Conscripts. Yeah, this has to be one of the best decks I think I've seen in this format. So lots of black sources required and then some lower amount of blue and red. But again, we have three perfect signets too. So blue, black, red, black, red, black. Sheesh. This deck is just stupid. I wonder if I even need the Through the Breach. Black Cleave Cliffs now, too. Oh, the Knight's Whisper is tempting. And you know what? Crocus is not bad here. You can, like, sneak attack or Through the Breach, uh, Grizzlebrand or Emrakul. And then if they're somehow not going to concede or be dead, you can Crocus it back to your hand. But this is close. The Cliffs, I think, takes over the Knight's Whisper just by a little bit since we picked up, like, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, black, white, signet. I guess we'd rather take sideboard gilded drake. There is a blue red land. Oh man, but uh, I think Inquisition's a little too good. I didn't actually get any discard yet, so getting that is nice. Okay, sideboard thirst. Oh, you know what I could do? I could actually take the Oath of Druids and splash that too. It's kind of funny. Well, I think this deck's insane. Will our draws line up with how insane the deck is? We'll have to find out. Um, I wonder almost if this is too much redundancy. Like, maybe I don't need Breach, but I keep Sneak Attack. Oh, I guess I can just run the Breach and 16 lands, like I was saying. Oh, this deck seems insane. So red-black sources there, blue-black there. We then have these three and the three Signets. So I need a few more islands, but don't need very many mountains. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This looks really good. Okay. Eh, the, the spell pierce might be a little bit out of place here. We could probably cut the spell pierce and instead run uh, uh, Blood Chief's Thirst or something. That's probably better. I don't know. This deck seems insane. Let's see if the draws can line up, but this is this is a crazy vintage cube. Sneak attack through the breach reanimate deck. All right, here we are for round one of this Vintage Cube draft. We have won the die roll. How does our hand look? Hmm. Okay, we have both Reanimate and Shallow Grave and Corpse Dance and a Frantic Search. Uh, I almost feel like our deck mulligans so well that we can pitch this if we want to, but we'll go ahead and give this a shot versus Unknown on the play here. And if we just draw any any tutor or fatty or anything like that, we should be good to go. Turn one Xander's Lounge. 
Okay. Do we want to go for frantic search right now? I guess I'm going to because if frantic search hits, we get to just well, do some good stuff, but we didn't hit, sadly. Let's discard the corpse dance. And I guess land? Hmm. This is going to be a really sad Wheel of Fortune if I fire it off because... Yeah. You know what I could do? Hmm. What I could do here is... Oh, they're going to grief me. I was going to say, I could have kept the land and then gone for, like, cast Shallow Grave. Oh, no, that doesn't work, does it? Never mind. If Wheel of Fortune was an instant, I could do that. I guess they might just take the Wheel of Fortune, yeah. But now I can reanimate their Grief, which is kind of nice. Oh, they have a Strip Mine. Well, that's, a, that's actually not too bad for us. This is a funny game. I'll take your grief. What you got in there, friend? Teferi Gideon. Oh. Well, their hand's not very good. What did they exile the grief? Damn. Sure. Alright, well, we have a lot of time, it feels like. <laughs> uh, we drew every single reanimate effect and not a single fatty. That's funny. We drew animate dead, shallow grave, reanimate, and corpse dance. They drew council's judgment. Boo. And they exiled their own grief. Okay. So they're just going to go land Gideon next turn. Come on, deck. You're too good to go down like this. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's lethal. We go in tomb. Mommy Emrakul, Shallow Grave, and that's the game! All right! The opponent had a lot of Planeswalkers, so Downfall probably comes in over Toxic versus them. Uh, nice thing is Blood Chief's Thirst and Bone Shards also deal with Planeswalkers. Looks like Spell Pierce could also be really good versus them. But yeah, I think we just run it back. Just make the Toxic swap out for the Downfall. We can get some really busted opening hands, too. I mean, when you have Lotus Mox Mox in your deck. We can go, like, turn one, reanimate. <laughs> With perfect draws. This is a solid hand for sure. For sure, okay. So this is a turn four Emrakul? Turn three Emrakul? Depending on? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Um, wow. I guess we can potentially Emrakul next turn. I don't even know if it's good next turn. They only have two permanents, but... We can probably bide our time, right? Just go like Signet here. Okay, I'm okay with Teferi Bounce Signet if that's their play. Sure, now we can just do it. Lotus, Breach, Emrakul, 
hit them down to five. They sack all four of their permanents. Our deck is so sick. Sheesh. This also shuffles our Lotus back in the deck. Kind of freaking good. I feel like a bad person. I kind of am a bad person. All right, there goes their grief again, exiling Kroxa to cast it. I mean, what do you even take here? One of the card draw or tutor effects, I guess? You could take Signet, but I'm not sure that's actually correct. It's probably got it, yeah. All right, then they have a tomb. Well, now that Talisman's gone, we just sit back and wait. We set them back pretty far, so there's no rush for us. Okay. Okay, okay. Once again, any number of top decks will win the game. Survival of the fittest. There, I mean, there is no rush, but I guess I will just go for the uh, frantic. Because we have a bunch of dead cards in our hand anyways. Ooh, speaking of. All right. Heck, even hitting one of our reanimate effects to steal their grief might be good enough. That, I would assume, is also probably good enough. So run out the Lotus. Go ahead and wheel. And that will do just fine, Chief. That will do just fine. <laughs> oh, this deck is so stupid good. I almost feel bad. It feels like we're doing stuff that's just almost constructed level quality. But who knows? I mean, this is Vintage Q. We might run into some other scary decks the next couple rounds, but for now... <laughs> I'm sorry! My deck is so busted! GG's. All right, nice, clean round one. Let's go to round two. And here we are for round two of the Vintage Cube. Ooh, man. We're on the draw, which makes this hand so tempting to keep. Because we have Putrid Imp, Emrakul, Corpse Dance. Ah, if this was Shallow Grave... Oh, I think I'm going to keep this on the draw. On the play, I would mulligan... But I think on the draw, we can keep this. We have so many good top decks. Most of them are mana sources. That is not one of them. I almost feel like I don't want to run out the Putrid Imp just so that it doesn't die. But I have the backup Bone Shards that I can discard to as well. Oh, this is risky. This is risky. Come on, land. Where are you at? Ooh, okay. Okay, this is fine. Signet's not actually a bad draw if we weren't going to find a land. Because that means any land gives us access to our third mana. Uh-oh, if we're playing against a control deck, we might have a bad day. Oh no. 
Oh no! <laughs> okay, well now I guess I'm discarding the corpse dance since we drew Shallow Grave instead, but we really need the opponent not to have a counter spell now. I hope they tap out for a 4-drop and I draw a land. And even if I do draw a land next turn, I think what I'm supposed to do is just play out Signet. Oh, are you kidding? This is very unlucky now. Holy crap. Four draw steps, no mana source. That's bad luck. And now they have access to Glenelendra. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? Okay, come on. Five draw steps, no land? I mean, I guess I'm going to try to kill their Glenelendra a couple times. Bro. I could have also held the Bone Shards, and then if I drew a couple mana sources, we could go Bone Shards, the Glenelendra, and then while the Persist trigger was on the stack, get them. Finally. What a joke. <laughs> uh, I wonder how many counters they have access to now. Do they want to counter the Signet? That's the question. Mystic Confluence is their counter. So Confluence and draw two. Okay. Bane Slayer, all right. Ah. Super sad state of affairs. I mean, a control deck might still give us issues if they have a lot of cheap interaction, but man. The odds of us not drawing a land there in the first, how many draw steps was it? Pretty unlikely. Go ahead and go for the Entomb end of turn. Because we have to try to bait out some counter magic anyways. Oh, I'm very happy that they're going to counter that. Okay. I mean, I kind of have to go for it. I'm assuming they have another counter, but if they don't, this is really good. All right, they just had hardcore counter spell, sure. Again, no surprises. No surprises here. Uh, what I can do is I can animate dead their Glenelendra, and if I find a blue source, we can counter one thing. But the issue here is that um, if it persists, they get it back. Uh, counterspell Glenelendra Confluence. So they're not doing busted stuff, but they have they have the. Uh, the counter potential. So I have to block this turn because they can activate Colon Colonnade and hit me for 9. Okay. They didn't attack with Colonnade, so they must have another big counter in their hand. 
All right. Let's go for Mystical Tutor and Tomb, I guess. Shouldn't really matter, though. Oh, I could have sworn I had... Uh... Well, we have to just grab Archon of Cruelty, then. All right, let's see if they have the counter. This will make them sack, but more importantly, I'll also gain some life back if this works out. Okay, nice. Shoot, maybe we have a small chance still. I mean, that's not the worst case scenario. Let's see, I need to grab another red source here because what we might be able to do is Wheel of Fortune into Lotus Sneak Attack. Can't attack because otherwise they activate Colonnade. They discarded a dam. Okay. There's the colonnade activation. I just have to take this because we need to keep the imp. So I'm going to go to three. Damn. Probably not a good thing that we have to discard the Shallow Grave here. That might have been one of our outs. Palace Jailer Brazen Borrower. Oh no! I am one mana short! I'm one mana short of being able to sneak attack here. Oh, if we had drawn any of our mocks, we win. Well, assuming they don't have any more interaction. Or if we had, if we had drawn the Shallow Grave... Oh my gosh. That is so brutal. So I guess I just run out the sneak attack and hope that my putrid imp can block the colonnade. That's insane. Oh, so insane. I mean, if if they don't have a uh, way to deal with Imp, please let me go to blocks. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold the freaking phone. Oh, you know what? I messed up discarding that Signet. Because if they bounce the sneak attack... No, if they could bounce the sneak attack, they would have bounced my imp. Is there a very small chance? Oh, they had destroy evil for sneak attack? Ah. <laughs> this was the saddest game. Oh. It felt like it should have been such an easy win. Jeez. All right, well, they have a ton of counter magic. I think we want to bring in the spell pierce. We can take out the thirst. More instant speed effects. So mannequin's not bad, toxic out. Brazen's probably okay. Oh, man. Getting stuck on one land so brutal. Come on, deck. On the play here. That's a mulligan. We have so many busted openers. 
okay. I wonder if I just go grab Wheel of Fortune off of this hand. I think I do. I think I pitch the breach here. And we go turn one, Triome, Mox, Mox, Talisman. Next turn, Tutor for Wheel of Fortune which will also put Grizzlebrand conveniently in our graveyard. All right, I will play the blue source. We didn't see any one mana counter magic from them. Doesn't mean they can't have it. Ooh, repeal mocks in response is nice. What did they discard? Oh, a bunch of garbage. All right, so now next turn we get to Inquisition them and then we get to Shallow Grave, Grizzle Brand, and draw a million with Spell Pierce open. And they don't have double blue access, that's good. Hey, they're going to tutor back, thank you. Okay. They have to discard now? Sure. Oh, they do have Gilded Drake. One, two, three, four. Uh, we're one mana off of being able to Emrakul them this turn. So instead, I think what we're just going to do is play out Signet. play out imp and pass I don't want to inquisition them until the turn I'm about to go off which is next turn okay they shock themselves if they go for teferi we'll spell pierce it probably Temporary lockdown. All right. Spell pierce that. Uh, that's what, that would have been really good right here. All right. And that's the win. In Inquisition to clear the coast. Go tutor for Emrakul and then shallow grave Emrakul. Counterspell per spell pierce in their hand. Sheesh. Our deck is so good, though. I can't stop saying it. Like, I feel like we got very unlucky to lose the first game, right? And that, my friend, is 16 damage. Good luck. Okay. Oh, infinite counter magic. I am so glad we have Inquisition and Spell Pierce from the board. Um, despite our deck being really good, I think their deck is good versus us. Counterspell, Spell Pierce, Mystic, Gilded, Drake, Glenelendra. But we'll see. Let's go to game three. Ah, not another one of these hands. So close. 
Oh man, one black source in this hand was nuts. How does this hand look? Oh man, again. We're so close. I guess this is a keep and I'm gonna pitch the corpse dance. Ah! Unfortunate mulligans here too. So, we're gonna hope that this is it Signet resolves. Oh, they kept a double white hand. Hey, hey, hey. All of a sudden, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Library, yeah, that doesn't do it. I wonder if they just temporary lock down here if they have it. Eat my signet. Not a bad draw. So I don't want to play out the Mox Jet in case they do have their temporary lockdown, even though we have Spell Pierce for it. Jeez, they have a Lotus too! Whoa! Okay, let's Mystical Tutor end of turn for Entomb. Let's see, Entomb plus we need to hold up. Entomb plus Animate Dead here. Um, we just go for Grizzle, right? Yeah. We hope that they have uh, their Mystic Confluence that I can Spell Pierce. Because the fact that they played out the Lotus tells us they're holding up a counter. Otherwise, they would have held it for Library. Six mana. Oh, do they have Spell Pierce plus Mystic Confluence? Oh, yikes. They do. Oh, are you kidding? And now if they have temporary lockdown next turn, we kind of lose. Okay. Well, we don't lose, but it's bad. That's so sick. That is so sick. They played out their land, so they're not planning on librarying uh man crazy games here yikes I guess we need to keep the Archon in our hands since we have both Sneak Attack and Through the Breach. And Grizzlebrand's already in our graveyard for a reanimate effect. I wonder if I was supposed to let their Mystic Confluence resolve and then just keep up Spell Pierce, but the fact that they had Mystic plus Spell Pierce there is just so unlucky, I feel like. And now they have access to counters probably 
I knew we were going to draw something like that. So this is good, though, because if they go for something end of turn, like if they pop their Marsh Flats, I mannequin in response. Okay. We might get him here. Instant speed actually saving the day, potentially. Yeah, baby. Oh, come on. Do I want to draw more than seven? I think seven should be plenty. Okay. Okay. We have got juice. Wish I had found Inquisition here too. I'm assuming they're just going to pass unless they go for the lockdown, but lockdown is a little bit risky here even. So, we have multiple instant speed effects that can just wreck them. So, end of their turn here, I think we go for the Breach. They only have three blue available. Whoa, they're activating Colonnade? Hello! So if this Breach resolves, Archon makes them sack Colonnade. Nice! Oh yeah, we're feeling great. Don't even care, they still have to sacrifice their Colonnade. Discard a card, okay. Okay, okay, baby. Also, they're at 16 again, so we just have the win with Corpse Dance Emrakul once more. I cannot get over how good our deck is. <laughs> uh, it's actually astounding how good our deck is. I guess technically I'm supposed to reanimate the, uh, that doesn't matter, but I should reanimate the uh, Archon first. Tell me, my friends, is this good? Your deck was cute, OP, but my deck is freaking insane. All right, 2 0. Let's get a trophy. All right, round three here of this vintage cube with our Insano Sneaky plus Reanimate deck. Ooh. Hmm. I guess I'm going to keep this. This is turn one Liliana. This looks a lot better than it is. I mean, it is still very good. Yes, but... I'm going to just discard Toxic here and keep all the lands. Ooh, Forest? We might regret this. We're hoping that they discard something that I can animate dead with this hand. Alright, discard mountain here. They're going to brainstorm in response, sure. 
I mean, if they discard any relevant creature, we're going to reanimate it. But otherwise, Liliana ultimates in two turns. So I discard Mountain. What are they going to discard? Be pretty pretty sicko of us if we just ripped the uh, ripped the entomb or a fatty off the top, a non Emrakul fatty off the top. Naked skydiver, sure. Um, do we want to make them? No, I guess we want to make them sack their skydiver. Come on, deck. I played turn one Lily. That's got to be good enough, right? Snapcaster Mage in response with Brainstorm. Sure. <laughs> Come on, discard a creature. Discard a creature. Leo, I'll take it. Good enough for me. It blocks Snapcaster Mage, it stops them from drawing extra cards. If they target anything of mine, I get to draw extra cards. Notably, this also means we might be able to um, to um, not discard anything next turn with Liliana. Like if we draw a land next turn or a mox or something, we can play out all of our stuff. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually really good. What's going on in there? Cycle miscalc, okay. All right, a bunch of stuff they can't cast. Awkward, though. If they find another land, then we're going to have a problem next turn. But they brainstormed and didn't have a land, so they might not draw one for a turn or two. Oh, they had Mox on top. Okay, so what I need to do here is they have a Snuff Out in hand. I need to minus two Lily. Chump with Shouldred. Sorry, Chump with Leo. And then minus two Lily again. And then we're still pretty far ahead. Oh no! They just cast Frantic Search into Leovold. They discard their hand. They don't draw any cards. <laughs> All right. Slight reprieve there. Whoopsies. They would have been able to fire off Frantic had they done this beforehand. But now we are very far ahead. So minus two. They're on the top deck. But I have a Planeswalker. And now if I draw any of my fatties, the Corpse Dance gets them. Come on. I think I need to save the Corpse Dance in my hand. I just need to hope that they stop ripping spells. They have to keep Liliana in check by attacking her for one. All right, land's fine. Dude, come on. Come 
Come on, deck. Holy smokies. So they know that I have something in my hand because I'm not playing anything out. At least they're just drawing lands. So we have time. We have so many different tutor effects, though, too. There we go. That will do her. Oh, wait, I'm one short. I'm one short. So I guess I just cast Talisman and pass. And I have to let them kill the Liliana now. Okay, so we go grab Entomb, um, do we want to grab Grizzlebrand here? Feels like Grizzlebrand is pretty safe for a million cards, but I kind of want to go grab Emrakul, no, it's probably Grizzlebrand. If they hit a counterspell off of this, that's so sick. They discarded Dig Through Time? That's even more terrifying. What? Okay. I guess let's just kill their shredder then and not draw any more. We have more than enough. What on earth did they keep that they pitched dig through time? I mean, I guess they have talisman from me, but. Dude, is everybody running Gilded Drake these days? Seems like it. They're passing. All right, let's upkeep Mystical Tutor, I guess. Hmm. I don't actually have much here. I suppose we can play out the sneak attack and then Wheel of Fortune next turn. I can also reanimate one of their creatures. Oh, I can reanimate Shouldred Wheel of Fortune. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Ah. So they lose 14, I gain 14. And then they, yep, then they die on their draw step. <laughs> they could have hit an instant speed removal spell or something, but ah, that's funny. We went for the fun play. That, that was probably, well, no, no, no. They had the talisman, so that was fine to go tutor and whatnot. All right, we'll bring in spell pierce again. Remember, that was the game that I went turn one. Oh, actually, no, what am I doing? Can't cut thirst. Not versus them. No, Spell Pierce didn't even need to be in there. They had a lot of random cheap creatures. Um, I guess Toxic wasn't as good, but the cheap removal spell was. Yeah, that was turn one Black Lotus Lily. Definitely one of the more fair things that we could do. I mean, we had a, we had a lot of reanimate effects. We just didn't find one of the fatties in time. I swear, if every deck could be like this, I would have a good time. 
All right. Okay, here's game number two of the third and final round. We're on the draw here with a one lander. Our deck is just too good. We mulligan aggressively with this one. Ooh. This is a keep, but... But, unless I draw an untapped black source... Or no, even if I draw an untapped black source, we don't have it on time, do we? So... Play Island, hold up Spell... Oh, we did draw the, draw the Swamp. Yeah, play Island, hold up Spell Pierce. If they don't do anything, we can tutor for Entomb. That's annoying. Let's go grab Entomb. Then play Tower, hold up Spell Pierce. I will go ahead and spell pierce that. And now we get to entomb animate dead on our turn. Yeah, let's just go grab Archon. That makes them sack their shredder, discard a card. Oh, lordy. Now I might be tempted to grab Grizzlebrand, because I'm going to have three mana after. Yeah, we'll just grab Grizzlebrand. Let them get their stupid loot. They were gonna get the loot anyways, but let them keep their stupid bird, I should say. Um, if we draw bone, or if we draw, if we draw. Shallow Grave, we can Emrakul this turn, so I'm going to go for it. Oh, the Mox works too. I forgot I have two Mox in this deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, Imp, Discard, Corpse Dance. This is turn three, by the way. Oh my god, this deck was insane. Alright, well, once more, take a look at that baby, because that was a delicious 3-0. Just way too good, way too consistent, way too many of the best targets. And uh, yeah, Black Lotus and Double Mox going to do you some good. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at uh, some busted, broken vintage cube deck. Don't forget to check out all of my other content here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, go to cardkingdom.com slash for all of your magic card needs. We'll see you back next week. Thanks for watching.